Chromatography Theory, Chapter 1, Peak Theory This educational video has been brought to you by Chrome Perfect, the leading independent chromatography data system. Throughout the video we will be using Chrome Perfect version 8 to demonstrate the topics being discussed. If you would like more information about our software, please visit our website at www.chromeperfect.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more chromatography and Chrome Perfect content, and hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. Peak Theory this chapter introduces the common measures of chromatographic peaks and defines common terms used. Here we assume that peaks have been detected and have been given satisfactory baselines. Common peak measurements. Consider the peaks shown on the screen now. The points where the baseline meets the chromatogram, or the drop line, define the start time and the end time of the peak. These points are marked by the small vertical tick marks, projecting downward at the peak start and upward at the peak end. The peak area is defined as the area between the chromatogram and the baseline. The peak height is defined as the greatest distance, measured vertically, between the chromatogram and the baseline. The point corresponding to this greatest distance is the peak top, and the time of this point is the retention time of the peak. Peak width measurements the peak width is commonly defined as the full width of the peak, measured at half height. The calculations are illustrated on screen now. Chrome Perfect always measures peak widths using horizontal lines, even when the baseline is sloped. First, an auxiliary horizontal baseline is drawn from the baseline start or end point, whichever is higher. A second horizontal line is positioned halfway between the auxiliary baseline and the top of the peak measured along the vertical line through the peak top. The points where this line intersects the chromatogram, define the front width and the back width of the peak. The peak width is equal to the sum of the front width and the back width. Similarly, the width of a peak may be measured at any other fractional height, such as 10%. Peak width measurements become tricky when the peaks are in a cluster. This chromatogram shows the measurements for a small peak that shares a common baseline with the adjacent peaks. Here again, the auxiliary horizontal baseline is drawn from the baseline endpoint. However, in this case the drop lines contribute much of the peak height, and the measuring line, at 50% of peak height, may not intersect the trace where the analyst intended. Indeed, the lower measuring line, at 25% of peak height, does not intersect the trace at all. Alternatively, the peak width may be estimated, without reference to the chromatogram itself, by calculating the ratio of the peak area to the peak height. Peak shape measurements. Chromatographers are frequently interested in the shape of peaks as an indicator of their column's performance. Most peak shape calculations are based on the front and back widths of the peak at particular fractional heights. Even more than peak width measurements, peak shape measurements become tricky when the peak shares a common baseline with the adjacent peaks. Ideally, chromatographic peaks are purely Gaussian and completely symmetrical in shape. In practice, they are neither. There are several ways to measure the deviations from the ideal shape. The peak skew provides a measure of the asymmetry of the peak and is defined as the ratio of the back width to the front width. Even severely asymmetric peaks are symmetric near the peak top, so skew is measured near the baseline, typically at 5% or 10% height. Skew equals B divided by F. Skew values are always positive. A symmetrical peak has a skew of 1.0, and a peak that tails has a skew greater than 1. Rarely, one encounters a peak whose skew is less than 1, indicating reverse tailing. The tailing factor is defined as the ratio of the peak width to twice the front width. Tailing factor equals F plus B divided by 2 times F. It is related to the skew. Tailing factor equals 1 plus skew divided by 2. Tailing factor values are always greater than 0 0.5. A symmetrical peak has a tailing factor of 1.0 
and a peak that tails has a tailing factor greater than 1.0. The kurtosis provides a measure of symmetric deviations from an ideal Gaussian peak. It is defined by the formula. Kurtosis equals 1.83 times, width at 50% height, divided by, width at 10% height. The kurtosis is also referred to as the peak Gaussian factor. Kurtosis values are always positive. A Gaussian peak has a kurtosis of 1. A peak that is too wide near the top has a kurtosis greater than 1. A peak that is too wide near the baseline has a kurtosis less than 1. Peak resolution measurements. These measurements provide a measure of column performance that considers both the peak width and the peak retention time. The resolution of a peak is a measure of its separation from the previous peak, compared to the width of these peaks. The formula for resolution is 2 times T2 minus T1 divided by 1.7 times W2 plus W1, where T2 is the retention time of the current peak. T1 is the retention time of the previous peak. W2 is the width of the current peak and W1 is the width of the previous peak. A value of greater than 2.0 indicates good separation, a value less than 1.5 indicates marginal separation. The number of theoretical plates for a peak is determined by the peak's width and retention time. The formula for theoretical plates is 5.5 times T divided by W squared, where T is the retention time of the peak, and W is its full width at half height. Note, these formulas differ from the formulas recommended by the USP literature. Prior to 1996, the USP specified that peak width be measured by extrapolating the relatively straight sides of the peak to the baseline. This definition is too vague to be carried out by software. Chrome Perfect measures the peak width at half height and assumes that the baseline width is 1.7 times this value. For most peaks, the results are similar to those described in the 1996 USP specifications.